Okay guys, we're back for game number two. The server looks good. The music is off. Finally. Oh Jesus. What what you can find on YouTube is quite amazing. Anyway, don't complain about my music or you I give you that kind of music hours long and I have no problem. I'm gaga enough after all this casting. Anyway, let's head into game number two. My name is Heflomo Casting here with Mr. Black Edda. This is the second game of a best of five series here. Forty thousand dollars on the line. It's the ESC. <sighs> ESCC, actually, it's a double C. Uh, 2015 Tier 2 Chinese Tournament, Tong Fu vs. Energy Pacemaker. Hefla? Yes, please. You're banned from streaming. I'm taking over. We're going to my music next time. No. Yes. No I'm DJ yes. Hefla. You're fired. <laughs> you can't fire me. I can fire you. <laughs> I am pretty sure I have the backing of chat. You're okay. fired. Okay, true. The the community decides. Well, can can you fire me after the best of five though, so we can actually focus on the draft and then get this going? I suppose, as long as we don't have that music between the next games. Going into this game so far, we have a Drow Ranger band and a Tusk band. Shadow Fiend removed by Tong Fu and finally Clockwork gone by Energy Pacemaker. First pick towards Tong Fu, and I'm expecting a Lashrak. Yes, Lashrak is definitely the way to go, unless they surprise us with something. Um, the typical thing, of course, we uh, I keep repeating it because it's just so, so normal for these games. After, like, I don't know how many, 30 plus games, um, they always draft pretty much the same or around the same strategy. There's just rarely some surprises coming. So, Leshrak right here, Queen of Pain is there. The Undying for the laning, uh, that would be quite interesting. We haven't seen Undying for quite a while because it was always banned later or earlier. It kind of depends. But Tongfu is thinking. Are they going for like the standard or are they actually going to, I don't know, come up with something new? The pocket struts are coming out now. They have nothing to lose. There are no bigger tournaments for them. It's not like they have to hide anything. They're not TI candidates. The same for Energy Pacemaker. So it's really about grabbing that money right here, right now. Well, we shall certainly see what they can provide. And with the first pick, they're certainly waiting quite a while, I suppose. There we go. I was expecting the this, this Shrag, we all were. But now going into Energy Pacemaker, they have the option of that Queen of Pain or the Gyrocopter. We've seen a lot of Gyrocopter Earthshake with the first pair, but in this case it'll be Storm and Rubik, to which we've seen quite a bit of Storm so far this morning. I believe this is the third or fourth game with Storm Spirit, yeah. and at least the seventh game with a Rubik. Yeah, the Rubik is, is something you, I don't think you're ever going to see it banned, it's just something you have to accept and then it comes down to the player and the situation, how like the Rubik potential unfolds. The Storm Spirit sometimes happens to be in the first, in the first some months and the Storm Spirit only gets through for Energy Pacemaker because they show Tong Fu versus Newbie, uh, two games where the draw was so powerful that Kong, Tong Fu says, you know what, we just ban that draw and, and well, take the bitter apple right there and just... Yeah, take the Storm Spirit instead. Well, now the ball is in Tongfu's court. What do they go with here? We've seen Undying quite commonly today, as well as the Queen. Both of them have merit and have to be mentioned. We've seen Techies. We've seen Tiny. And this time we get a Winter Wyvern. Now, in this case, a Winter Wyvern this early, if we don't see an AA ban, I would expect to see an AA. I mentioned this in an earlier uh, game in today's set of casting yeah ancient apparition against winter wyvern and the aa does have quite an impact considering how easy it is to set up an ice blast on a cold embraced target absolutely or even if even if the the ice pass is for example the initiation which we see sometimes it just comes from across the map hits the target then you initiate um you cannot save a target with the cold embrace i mean the absorbing the physical still works but you do not regenerate any any HP, so you're pretty much uh, the same target, same low HP target as before. So yes, it's it's very nice to actually do something against the Winter Vibram. But in the game where we had the Winter Vibram, there was so much magical burst uh, on their side that we kind of said, okay, that engine operation would just be another squishy target. The problem is, be, be, besides Ice Blast, I mean, you saw the last game; it goes so 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 long. Like you actually think the Ice Blast would have made a difference in those fights, given that everything would have been the same till late game? Mm. I don't think so in the last game, but this game is slightly different considering we've got the targets in this one who can benefit from the uh, from the Chilling Touch. And Chilling Touch 
well, it adds a flat 50 damage at level 1 to everyone who's buffed by it. It's That's quite true. a yeah. powerful thing. Yeah, till mid game ancient apparition is is nice. Then um, I don't know, like the cold embrace and everything, yeah, scales a bit down. The ice blast then gets a, a tiny bit boost when the Argana scepter is coming out. But after that, then there's kind of the limit. Then you can really just hope for some utility items and that he stays longer alive. Maybe some some yeah cold feed procs. But that's pretty much about it. We get a dazzle instead. They don't want to have a shallow crave to work with on the other side as well as no Pagna, so they, they make sure that Energy Pacemaker does not get through with their relatively known uh, strategy by now. They, they always had the Lashrak Pagna, for example, at least one of the pushers in their setup. That's not going to happen right now. The Earthshaker being banned, because the Earthshaker did quite a nice job last game. I mean, he was very well farmed in that offline, more than he actually offliner should get. And of course, Naga Siren, well, that's 100% that's respect ban. You just don't want to have the Naga Siren. <laughs> no, after that last game, I don't think any of us do. That was an hour and five minutes of Naga just split farming. I believe she ended on 800 CS. That's excessive. The Earthshaker, however, I completely understand this ban. The amount of impact the Earthshaker had in the early game for Tongfu, he had a blink dagger at, I believe, 14 minutes, if not earlier. It was ridiculous. And if he gets anywhere near that kind of performance again, Lena. Earthshaker justifies the ban. It, it it's just hands down justified. However, yep. now we get the Lena for energy pacemaker. That's going to combo quite nicely with the Rubik and balls in Tongfu's court. Also, quite nice against the Winter Vibrant because don't forget, like the Cold Embrace protects you against physical damage, not against magical. So uh, the Lena actually has a setup. So because sometimes you have the targets, yes, that comes to Cold Embrace and then to just run away with. Uh, quite a nice HP pull back, but of course if you actually have the timing right the call and brace could also be a setup for another uh, Light strike array or the Laguna plate might actually be used because it's okay It's a very low target Lina has actually the chance to get in range and just Laguna plate the target It's like a big fat. I don't know Corsair on your Forehead pretty much mm. That much I'll agree on the Laguna is a pretty damn good counter to the winter weapon however what are Tongfu going to opt for here? We've got what I expect to be a core Leshrac. I don't think I've seen Tongfu play a support Witch Leshrac doctor. today. We get the win with a Winter Wyvern combined with a Witch Doctor as your supporting pair. So we're going to be looking to make as much use as the Death Ward as possible. And I'm wondering how effective these casks are going to be against the Energy Pacemaker lineup. And one thing that has setup. to be mentioned. I love this setup. It's it's just a yeah. Winter's Curse plus the Witch Dog. If yeah. if you, for example, catch them and you're sitting on the, I don't know, any high ground, maybe around the Roshan or the Secret Chop or like in, in the mid lane high ground, it doesn't really matter. If, if they come from the low ground to the high ground and the Winter Viren actually gets the first target, for example, with the Winter's Curse, then for that duration, everybody's just hitting the target regardless of BKB. And yes, the Witch Dog has the time to actually channel this through. Um, other than that, of course, there is a downside. I, I had exactly this draft already in the round robin. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Tong Fu or not. I can't uh, recall. But the fact is the Storm Spirit, his only mission in the entire game was focus on that Witch Dog. Because if the Witch Dog gets a long cast through, you have nothing else. And right now they draft the Witch Dog into Light Strike Array, into Telekinesis, into Vortex, plus X item that could Hex, Sheep, Stun, whatsoever. So the positioning of the Witch Dog is going to be very crucial. And most likely a BKB would be quite nice. I was going to mention the combo between the Witch Doctor and the Winter Wyvern. The thing to note with the Winter Wyvern, uh, the targets that are hitting the guy affected by the curse get 70% damage resistance. So the Witch Doctor will need to set up just as the Winter's Curse starts to end. The other thing to mention here is Rubik can steal all of Witch Doctor's spells really easily. Stolen Death Ward is going to be something to watch for in this game. However, Energy Pacemaker give themselves a Phoenix. And this looks familiar, does it not, Hefler? Yeah, it does look familiar. The Phoenix coming out... Uh, I'm not so sure, actually. Like, where's the physical core? What's coming through? Do they pick something greedy for the fifth one? To be honest, anything could fit in. To be honest, I could even see anti Mage again. Like, with the Lina, the Phoenix, Storm Spirit, Rubik... I think they even have enough, yeah, to, to buy the time for something greedy. I agree completely on the anti-mage. Hell, anti-mage could work for either team right now. I mean, you consider Storm Spirit is a walking mana bomb, so is Leshrac. Winter Wyvern, good mana pool. There's your anti-mage. I was expecting yep. it for one of the teams, and it won't go into the band stage. So, anti-mage, 
good against the Storm, pretty much good against all of Energy Pacemaker. No surprises. Now into the final bans. What do you ban as Energy Pacemaker? The supports are there. Middle Eshrak is there. You've got your anti-mage in the safe lane role. You're looking for an off-laner. Yeah, so that's, that's actually hard. The bounty hunter, considering. Look how squishy the lineup of Energy Pacemaker is. Yeah, for, for Rubik, Lina, etc., that's that's actually not a bad pick. Um, they're going to ban the Magnus, just being afraid of like a big fat combo ultimate. I guess, to be honest, I think this was just a blind shot. This was just uh, throw everything against the wall and see what stick, what could hurt us the most. And yeah, that could definitely be the case. A good RP into a Split Earth, into the Coconut Flying, into uh, even the Mana Void. That is definitely working. They're gonna go for Dragonite. There's the pushing power. That's that's something that you cannot underestimate. Dragonite um, will, however, probably lane here in the safe lane, which I don't like. I'm not a big fan of Dragonites because when they are mid and they're fast level 6, they can already do something on the tier 1 tower. Most of the time, it's straight up 100 damage by Corrosive Breath, plus uh, the right click hit you do on the tower. That's why I kind of like it. But... Well, let's see. It kind of depends what he gets done on the safe lane. Or maybe I'm totally wrong and we go for a safe lane Storm Spirit. We have seen that even in this tournament. But then I'm also not a fan of it. Then I'd rather have the Dragonite there. I'm not too sure about this Dragonite pick. Dragonite generally takes quite a bit of time to come online. And if he goes for the Silver Edge, it can be a completely different thing. And we get the Brood for Tongfu. So the Spider is back with a vengeance, much to my chagrin. Yeah. In well, this case, however, Energy Pacemaker have quite a bit of spider clearing capability. Absolutely. To be honest, I don't feel comfortable about this Brute Mother pick at all because you have the Storm Spirit who can hunt the Brute Mother even through trees. You don't have to fear that the, the Lina is also clearing out trees. You have the Dragon Knight uh, with the potential uh, similar to what we had before against the Brute Mother. Like, uh, if he really goes for Shadow Blade or Silver's Edge, then he can actually find the Brute Mother, something like that. Um, the rest of it is also kind of obvious. They have enough to get something done against the Brute Mother. Also, when it comes to clearing out the, the Brutlings, there are the Remnants, there's Fate Bolt, which is not enough, but yeah, in summary, there's the Brief Fire, we have the Dragon Slay. That, I think that's that's completely enough to, to deal with those adds for sure. We have to see how this one goes. And uh, is that lag? Oh, fuck me. Okay, I'm, I'm not lagging, at least, are you? I'm restarting Dota completely. This is too much. Okay, in the meantime, we're back to Radio Dota, ladies and gentlemen. Let's introduce the players very quickly. We've got Zinku handling the anti-mage for Tong Fu. UUU9 reprising his role as the Leshrac. We've got LPC handling the Winter Wyvern. He might actually get caught here. He just walked straight uphill into the Dragonite and Lina. One stun from the DK into a Light Strike away from the Lina. Can the Winter Wyvern survive? He does get onto the high ground with the uh, with the Arctic Burn, but it's nowhere near enough. The Phoenix comes in, clears the trees, and down goes the Winter Wyvern as the first blood <coughs> in favor of, of uh, Energy Pacemaker, actually. But uh, where was I? I was introducing players. For, on the Broodmother for Tongfu, we've got uh, Zex Bingo. On the Witch Doctor, we've got Kabu. And that's it for the... Kung Fu lineup. Over on the flip side of the coin for the Energy Pacemaker crew, we've got LT on the Lina, we've got uh, Two on the Phoenix, we've got Lee on the Rubik once again. Collecting the Bounty Rune right now, you've got Old Chicken playing the Dragon Knight, and finally you have Fan on the Storm Spirit in the safe lane, so it is a mid-DK in this case. Now, one thing I will point out, we do have the Lina and the Rubik on the enemy high ground right now on the jungle. They're actually going to go on to Kabu. Do they have enough damage to bring him down? They have the right clicks. It, all it'll take is two more. The cast comes out, but it doesn't bounce. One right click will seal the deal on Kabu, and he actually survives for now, but the courier doesn't. It gets brought down by a right click coming through from the Lina, and the Rubik will fall as the support comes in from LPC and from UU9 on the Leshrac and the Winter Wyvern, respectively. But well, the Lina will going find down. himself, yeah. Witch Doctor will find himself getting killed off by the Lina by one rogue right click as this gets dragged straight out to the tier three of Tong Fu. And Lina will fall in the end as well. Well, that's that's a interesting start, I have to say. I mean, the last kills I catch there, like with the entire Dota start, apparently it worked. We are back on track without any lag on the Chinese server. So, yep, that's pretty much it. There are also the stats. Everything's fine. Sorry for that, guys. It's just the randomness of Perfect World. It's nothing I can do. Next time we at least know how to fix it faster. Anyway, a 2-2 start. So it's kind of even. Who got the first blood bonus? Which team? 
First Blood went to energy, pace, uh, yeah, energy Pacemaker, killing off the Winter Wyvern, who was massively out of position. Okay, I think you already went through with the introduction, so we go directly into the laning. I have to orientate myself. We have a tri lane top right against the Phoenix in the offlane, and the Prude Mother is going to be against the Storm Spirit. So they, after all, sent the Storm Spirit in the safe lane. Uh, that was an option I said I don't like, but I guess we can work with it because the Remnant is still nice against the, the Spider Links if you catch them out. Rubik. And of course, Selena is gonna be supporting. They they are stacking the jungle, but that is something interesting to be honest, because that could go horribly wrong. Actually, no, Delina. It looked like she wanted to stack. Doesn't really happen. Well, part of me wonders, really, after that early scuffle between Tongfu and Energy, what the order of business is going to be for Tongfu, really, considering we both agreed this Broodmother feels out of place. There is too much AoE cleared for these spiders to really pick up. So are we going to see that Dagon build that you like so much? Oh no, I I just don't wanna don't wanna have the Dagon again. <laughs> <laughs> you agree with me finally, yeah? No, it's not about agreeing. I, I think it's it's the right build to go for. Just uh yeah, yeah, Storm Spirit, Rubik, Lina, you can blow them easily up. The only target that will be definitely tanky is of course old chicken here on the Dragonite just by default. But let's see where this one is going. At the moment, I kind of like what they what the tri lane does here. They go for a very very effective double pull as well. The Rubik did only a simple pull. I really thought they're gonna go for more, but no, it didn't really work out. The Broodmother, well, getting some damage in there, but well, Storm Spirit, the safe lane is not a mid lane. The Phoenix in the meantime did just eat a lot of harassment damage through from the tri lane. We got a little too overzealous and almost paid for it with this life. All it took was two more, three more right clicks coming through from the Witch Doctor and the Winter Wyvern of LPC and Capu. But he's fine though. I mean, he has Tranker Boots, he does Tranker Boots swapping when he's under the tower. Everything just seems fine there. Uh, I don't think they're gonna go for the Coconut here. This is really just some harass. Uh, disabling the Tranker Boots is very important. So having one of the supports always in just for a random right click on the Phoenix, that's, that's bringing his HP effectively down. But, well, in the worst case scenario, he really just goes behind the tower and then regions up with the Tranker Boots, which is very, very powerful early on, and he got the goal for it. That's why he has such a decent start. He should be around for most of the XP, and also the pulling is not the most effective one. Now they do it again, but at least one creep wave, classic catapult. No, actually, no, <laughs> this is a radiant catapult, but I thought this one also reached the tower. <laughs> no, we're not quite that far pushed through yet. But let's, uh, let's take a quick analysis of the middle lane, shall we? We've got a Dragon Knight up against the, uh, the Leshrac. This, to me, really feels like a bad lane for a DK. Yeah, well, uh, he will do fine just with the bottle and the brief fire and everything, but of course the Leshrac will punish him every time he comes close. Oh, I think we have a go on the Brute Mother. There's another Overlord ch charge, and yes. The Storm Spirit is going to get that kill finally on the Prude Mother. However, their sentries, for example, they run out, which means it's every time you, you come up with new sentries, it's the best case scenario is that you really just kill the Prude Mother, so you get the 200 gold back pretty much, which you had to spend to kill her. Mm. Well, the amount of investment, though, it does get you a good chunk of experience just killing this brood <clears throat> over and over again. And you know how much I'd say this no one likes a spider. Oh, look at this, like the anti mage actually going really ham on the Phoenix, forcing him into using the Icarus Dive, which is the best case scenario, because if you have a Phoenix that uh, has the Icarus Dive going, then, yeah, once that is off cooldown, uh, on cooldown, then you can really kill him easily. The Storm Spirit, not quite level 6 yet, because with level 6, that Winter Vibrant would have been an easy kill, but... Well, they still get some nice harass in there. The Prude Mother, however, getting really ballsy. You can be that ballsy because look at it. The, the Prude Link's doing quite some damage and peel on that Storm Spirit. He is going for a bottle. However, not having the time to actually crap the rune. He has to bottle crow this one, but we also have a bottle crow in the mid, which, yeah, slows it all down quite considerably. I think the big problem here for the Storm Spirit, who may even die here if he's not careful, is that he doesn't have a stout shield, so these spiders are doing their full amount of damage to him every damn time. Sure, he's got six armor. Six armor is nothing against those spiderlings. Those spiderlings will still hit you for a good amount of damage if you don't get a stout. Oh, this is dangerous what the Dragonite is doing here. They know he wants to go for the dragon, but yeah, he goes into dragon form, stunning the Lashrak, so the stun doesn't come out right immediately, but now, there it is, it hits, and now the brute 
mother will go to work however there's a stick charge he has nothing else well the bottle is still there they're trying they're really trying but there is the stun on the Leshrac Light Strike Array there is what we talked about the wind survivor still had enough mana for that setup but brief fire and now comes the turnaround here this should be lethal even on the Yes, on the Prude Mother, and now they want to have more. The Winter Vibrant completely out of mana, no stick. One of the Fire Spirits hit the second one. Not where is it? Brief Fire, and that's a triple kill for Old Chicken. You said something about the bad lane? I have no idea what you're talking about. Bad lane for the Storm Spirit against the Brood Mother. The Brood Mother <laughs> left the Storm Spirit alone, and everything is completely fine again. I, the, the other lane I was worried about was Leshrac versus DK. Neither of those two things just happened, Tefla. Yep, and the anti-mage actually going real deep on the phoenix, like to, to a certain point, oh the first mana word is coming out and the phoenix is going down, so anti-mage well aware of how much HP and how much he can do and how how fast he is with the PTs right now. The phoenix a bit oversell us after that fight directly TPing there, so yeah, he had to pay with his life. And good for the anti-mage because right now his farm is decent, adding a hero on, on top of that list is very nice for him. Yes, he's 46 for 20. That cost him, what, missing one CS, killing a hero? That is more than worth it. And the first member of the DK crew, DK, had a 61.3% win rate when facing against Lashrag. Okay, I'm completely wrong. Yes, completely wrong. It happens wrong. on occasion. Well, I mean, the laning is still hard for him and everything, but apparently, well, the stats... There are not many games that actually represent this, this circumstance, however, we had a had a nice sentry board in the mid that cleared out this observer, unfortunately it was not set here or somewhere here because it would have scouted the second one, so sentry board in the, in the mid is not going to happen in case someone actually picks up uh, Invi rune, which might happen now. This is the 8 minute rune and this could actually determine if we see a fight or not. This is the illusion rune, plus elder dragon form is ready, the dragon knight heads towards top. And the Phoenix, the Phoenix could need like one or two creeps experience because then we have a supernova and the supernova is at this level very very nice. Mm. But if we can get early supernovas start rolling for Energy Pacemaker they certainly look to be able to pick up the speed and momentum in this game. Especially considering they've got the three kill advantage right now. The thing that I draw problems with is the fact that AM is getting so much free farm though without contest. Okay, that was interesting in the mid. It, for a second it looked like they wanna engage, the arctic burn came out, but in the end, not really. They just telekinesis back, but even that doesn't really serve any, any purpose. It's just showing what you got. But yeah, no consequence whatsoever. The Prude Mother, however, um, compared to the Prude Mother we casted earlier, it, she's doing much, much better. The Storm Spirit, not quite uh, able to get the spiral links off, and he also has no sentry support anymore. This one is running out, and then after that he's completely blind in this lane. Mm. Well, when those sentries go down, you've got to be very careful. And just take a quick look at Fan. How much damage he took from the one set of attacks from those spiders? Oh, lucky bounces here on the Phoenix. Actually, the Lina stunned so close, the vision was there. Do they actually turn this around here with the Dragon Slide, with all the Fire Spirits there? Still a Nova, but having that Nova, yes, he actually goes through with that. Should be a kill on the Winter Vibrant. Oh, is it? I mean, he's going to get that stun. Yes, Dragon Slide is the perfect setup. So they're going to go through with this. Easy kill. Nice setup. I didn't actually see these two in, in, in synergy working that well, but yeah, it just worked out perfectly. Well, this is what you were saying. As soon as that uh, Cold Embrace comes out, it's just an easy target for any of these spellcasters, especially that Loon, L L Lina once she gets the Laguna Blaze. Yep. Bear with me, I've been up since 5 a.m. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Don't tell me about it. About it. Anyway, Broodmother has to be careful because there is the Rubik around. Never mind that. He actually does not have any vision. Is there a courier flying out? Anything like that? Nope. But we have an uh, invisibility rune. That's now, of course, something very interesting for the Storm Spirit, who has a bottle, an empty bottle, by the way. But in the mid, there's a fight. I want to go on the Winter Vibrant, really. That is absolutely victim dragon. He's going to help himself at the moment with the Cold Embrace, but not enough healing against the Fire Spirits. That being said, Storm Spirit going back to his lane. Well, they're going to push tower. That's definitely a guaranteed tower kill for the Decay. I guess, yes, old chicken. He had that triple kill. Now he had the tower. It's very nice for him. Lina, in the meantime, just guarding that rune. He could really need that. And the Witch Dog also has to be super careful. Like, he has spent, has to spend all his mana and even TP back to the fountain. And the Brood will go down in the meantime too fast. That kind of damage coming out of the storm, I don't think the Brood expected. And that was just a bit of a misplay. Now that was the invisibility rune used plus a dust. I didn't see he has dust. Uh, I don't know if that just came in or if he had that before. If the Rubik gave it him to him or maybe I'm, I'm just blind. The fact is, the anti-mage is coming. 
uh, towards that area, but uh, going for the storm, I don't think that's gonna work. Um, what's gonna work is of course farming the enemy jungle. Then again, why taking that risk if you can actually farm your own jungle? Might be explained by the fact that Winter Vyvern is rotating in. We might have the Witch Doctor. At least it looked for a second like he's rotating into that lane. Well, they're gonna go smoke. Leshwerk, Witch Doctor combination. The Coconut plus the Split Earth. Top, there are three heroes. There has to be another TP to actually make this fight somehow viable. Hmm. Well, if they keep pushing this aggressively, sure, Energy Pacemaker can get the early game secured, but can they really make this flow into a mid to late game dominance should they need to? Oh, they see the Lina. There's the initial stun, there's the follow up. Oh, it is even into a Maledict. It's a Maledict level one, so not the end of the world. The Light Strike Array is coming through, and that should be a kill on. The Lashwag, well, she gets the Maledic death, but it's a two for one trade and everything's fine at the moment. Well, the Phoenix is left alone here in that lane. I don't know, is he already forced into the Phoenix egg? It doesn't really look like it. It's it's rather him actually killing a lot of Spiderlings, and now he has one urn charge left, and the Tranquil Boots popping in in just a second. Hmm. Well, hmm. Just, just trying to think this one through. If Energy Pacemaker can control this early game and move to the mid game, how do Tongfu really weather this storm? Do they really rely on the Brood just to harass this bottom tower as much as humanly possible and give uh, Zing Q all of the space in the world? Do they trust in the AM? Is that really the only route they're going to have to go in? Oh, they're going to get all the ruling. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of would say that, but the Storm Spirit... Well, he still needs quite some to actually be effective. Oh, there's a long stuff. He's going on the Winter Vibran. He has to kill him before the Colon Praise. And yes, it's coming through. The question is now, Prude Mother is not scouted. He didn't pop the dust just in case in case she is around. So there's no follow-up whatsoever. I think with these two, uh, they could have made even a go on the Prude Mother. It's not going to happen. One kill is one kill. There's just no arguing about it. The Storm Spirit level 11. He actually has decent gold. Is there already... Yes. The Orchid is ready in the Courier. There goes the gold, down to 100, but the Orchid is ready. And with that Orchid, that's of course bad timing now for Tong Fu, because right now, 11 Storm Spirit, Orchid, 30 minutes. That's a very good timing. He can jump on the Witch Dog, that's a solo kill. Can jump on even the anti -Mage, that's a solo kill. The thing with this lineup for Tong Fu, none of them are exceptionally tanky. And even if you do get cold embraced, the soul burn from the Orchid is still going to be more than enough to bring you down if say the storm spirit gets his full oh, combo look at this. on you. Nice wrap around here. There is no ward, no nothing, so Tongfu has no idea what's going on. They go along the sidelines. The Prude Mother, she feels one of her legs is at least tingling. Something is wrong. Um, but yeah, they're gonna head over back to the mid. There's no tier 1 tower anymore protecting, but again, Winter Vyvern, he's like more the Winter victim. Never mind, he's also hiding on the high ground, which is the smart thing to do. The other the other flying thing here, the yellow flying thing, is maybe scouting him out, but it's also nighttime, so short of vision, it's no, it's not really working out. In the end, they're not gonna find anything, but there might be the go on the Prude Mother. Vision is also not there. So kinda I don't know. Fruitless rotations by EP. Trying to find something. Well they're going to push this tier one with the next dragon form. That's their order of business here. The thing is I've gotta oh, point this out. Tad that Storm Spirit just got obliterated. That was the Winter's Curse the first time in this game. And well, that's the perfect setup. The Ward, Maledict, everything was on top of him. That just hurt so much. Hmm. And it could be a tier one for uh, Tong Fu, at least in response to the tier one that Energy Pacemaker about to take down on this bottom lane. And the one thing I have to point out about this Broodmother for um, Zex Bingo, he does have himself a Hand of Midas. So they do have that recovery or at least level acceleration tool for the Broodmother. Yep, at the moment, well, the Dragonite is trying to get some damage in here, brief fire and whatnot. The Broodmother is in a very, very dangerous situation here. If there is, well, there is a ward, at least for the the higher vision. With that ward, you actually see even behind the tower, but, well, they don't have any sentry ward, so they could, cannot scout out the Broodmother. If, if you would have put the sentry ward in lane somewhere, then they had an easy kill. Uh, I actually thought Tongfu was going to somehow initiate on this one. They rather use the cliff. But the question is now, the DK, his ultimate is ending, and I think they're gonna end this push as well, or is he... No, he just picked something up. That was just a TP scroll. Never mind that. My question is, how do you initiate a fight like this? Do you really just initiate with task and hope you get some good bounces? Because they don't really have any true initiator, and they still don't have, say, a Manta on the AM. Oh, He's actually yeah. going for his Vladimir's. Which ward actually sees which ward here? Like, 
it looks like this world actually sees the other one, but this one does not. So that's kind of hilarious that they, they plant the sentry walls like this. I'm not sure we're going to see if, if they push again in time. In the meantime, well, the Storm Spirit, he had a bad, bad lesson to learn, obviously, in that top line, and they lost the tier 1 tower on there. There's the typical Chinese ward. They, they always plant this ward here. Uh, in this tournament, I don't know, it's like a very very standard spot so they know exactly the storm spirit is around there nevertheless, he's just hiding around the trees trying to find something, hoping that a lonely farmer is somewhere to grab for a kill, but also the dragonite he's invisible however, so they have no idea he's actually going through well, if the DK can get something with this invis rune, that'll be perfect problem being what can he really accomplish? right now when all of the dire side are effectively on this bottom lane fearing some form of initiation or maybe looking to counter push this tier one which i think is going to be more likely oh the anti-mage jumps on the storm spirit the funny part is i think yes there the storm just remember that they are at least two people around this area so they just go for it with the help of the orchid no way he can actually blink out and that means maybe the beginning of a tower push dragonite's coming in looping around there's a smoke by the witch dog but if he breaks that well He's going directly into the Shadow Blade and Winter Byron. Oh, that's a bad idea. The Arctic Burn just to get far, far away. Is there a Icarus Dive? No, there's not. The Dragonite trying to find him, but he's far away. He, he saw that one coming, but they should still get the Tier 2 Tower at least. I'm not so sure if the Vector Protection kicks in earlier. No, it's not. Like, next creep wave was far away. Still, bottom. There's an Ice Fight. Alina already going down, but they used the Egg at the same time. The Lash Rock is probably going to get a lot of this burn, plus the tower hits, no, it's not going to enough. The mm. Phoenix is going to get the revenge kill, and well, in summary, that's much better. Also, top, the Witch Dog just going down by a Dragonite, who has been maledicted up, but, well, he's going to keep on pushing, even on the tier 3 tower. The Brood Mother has to go back in this lane, that's always a bad sign. Nice little stun on the Anti-Mage, does he pursue him? It looks like it, burning him down, he can get him probably to zero mana. But, well, just going for a right click, saying hello, old chicken knows, the storm spirit is coming in and the anti-mage says like, wait, what, DK is not afraid of me, so I might as well just run. To be fair, in a fight between the DK and the anti-mage at this point, I'd actually think the DK would win that. For mm. one, he has the shadow blades so we can get away from Mana void. But for two, I, no, mana void wouldn't do enough damage. At this point, what, you've got a level two mana void, it does 0.85 damage per missing mana. How much mana pool does a, uh, a dragon yeah. at this point have? Not even 500, but they jump on the anti-mage. The orchid still holding here, but yes, it's gonna be enough. The Winter's Curse is gonna be on the Storm Spirit, but way, way too late. The Split Earth coming out, but that's pretty much the end of the fight. And again, they lose their core, which is bad news. The Dragonite, how is his ultimate? Still 18 seconds, but that's that's just fair enough. Like, just, just go for it. Tier 2 is absolutely waiting for EP to be taken out. Of course, there is a Broodmother, and I don't think they can do anything against this Tier 1 falling now into the Broodmother. Well, I think they would happily sack this tier 1, considering they're getting a tier 2 in the mid lane. This DK is just continually pushing. He's not even committing the Dragon Form for this. He's saving the Dragon Form should any form of defense come his way. And he is just tanking up, considering that's a full uh, full Silver Edge, plus a Ogre Club on top of it, which will be built into a BKB. Yeah. BKB, Sangayasha, I'm not so sure, yeah, but BKB should should definitely the item to go. Like, having it early on uh, should be fine. It doesn't protect you against... Uh, say it interrupt by the mana void when you try to TP out it does not protect you against winter curse But everything else oh in the meantime they found the prude mother. Okay. I did not expect this one Apparently she was farming there someone scouted her out and well, it's it's going well for uh, EP Underlining this with the graph. We are heading towards the 10k advantage right now. It's at 8k but it's still climbing, especially with that tower now to kill on the prude mother in the mid We have to go on the last track has been already stunned. Oh, that was a nice that was a nice Laguna played, almost a save by the Winter Vibram, but then there was still a Dragon Slave going through. There is just so much magical damage available for Energy Pacemaker, it makes you wonder what was the idea with this Winter Wyvern. Considering it was picked up very early in the draft, Energy Pacemaker had more than enough opportunity to draft around it. Absolutely, and now, well, the Dragonite... He's running potentially through a Sentry Ward alongside an Observer Ward here, so he's not gonna get this, but... Well, he wants to find the anti-mage. Is he blinking into the trees? No, he's not even gonna find him. He was just che checking, yes, the camps. He sees the empty camps, so he knows the anti-mage was somewhere around, but in the end, it's not enough to actually find him. I guess he's mm. just gonna go back and defend whatever is knocking on the tier one tower, a uh, tier two tower. Well, anti-mage is actually getting very aggressive and blinking forward. Is he gonna blink forward again? No, he's gonna back up. 
I don't actually think he saw the DK there, considering it's nighttime right now. So if he blinked forward, it could have led to some very funny shenanigans. Yeah. And talking about shenanigans, I mean, this, this Storm has been relatively passive, considering that he has such a blast of the game, but he wants to underline uh, his current farm and the amount of kills they get, which is a lot, um, simply by a Bloodstone. The Rubik, oh god, he goes into trees. This was probably the best TP he could have ever done. Like, running away might have not been successful. This one is just perfect. It's golden. Actually, the Leshrac has to be careful, because if they have the vision on him, they might actually go for this. This is a free on free. It's, actually, it's a free on four. The the Witch Dog is hi hiding under the wings of the Winter Vibrant somewhere. I honestly don't think it's going to matter that much, though, the extra person. If you have LPC land a Winter's Curse in a small enclosed space, it's a pretty much one fight for energy pace. Uh, for, um, sorry, for Tong Fu. Okay, now the anti-mage. He is... Oh my god, how did they see him? They go on him. Orchid, Laguna played. Easily taken out. Tell me, how did they see him exactly? I actually have no idea, unless the spirit remnant from the storm spirit I don't revealed know. it. There is no ward, no nothing. He blinked from here to there, and then the storm just came in. Okay. Either they heard it, or the spirit gave vision. One or the other. Okay, that's that's very interesting, to be honest. Very interesting. Nevertheless, it's going to end up in pretty much the last auto tower falling for Tong Fu. And now, of course, it gets icky. Because the next time they, they lose their core or even more, then, yeah, it's tier 3 time. And that's, of course, bad. The Phoenix hasn't been part of anything uh, for quite a long time. There is an ultimate orb up com or coming up. What, what is this one going in? Like, Hex? Lincolns, mm. but you don't need the Lincolns in this game here. They they pretty much own this game at the moment. It's a very, very solid lead of 12k right now. Lincolns are passive item. I don't think that's, that's the way to go for So maybe this is really to go into some more stats and then into the Hex. In this case, yeah, I think it will be a Hex. The Hex against, say, the Anti-Mage is just far too valuable. Or Hex the Witch Doctor when he starts trying to channel the Death Ward. Both of these are very valid options in dealing with it. But more importantly, right now, Roshan goes down, Fan picks it up, so we've got the Aegis on Storm Spirit, and we all know how powerful that is. I think it's about damn time we start focusing on it's lagging. a objective, and yes, it is lagging, even I'm getting it this time. And the, and the players, so Kale. Yes, Kale. I don't know what's going on with the perfect world servers, but perfect is definitely not the description, my friend, that should be on these servers. I believe our stats man had a good way of putting that, and I'm sure uh, he'll he'll type it again just to, for emphasis. Yep. Well, either way, they, they continue for now, so the lag seems to be... Never mind that. Actually, if, if they move, then you still get like the little frame drops, but it doesn't matter if he still... We still see what's actually happening, and that's good because there is the tower push tier free. What are working on it still? Like they have the cliff, so they can slow all this down. The phoenix can actually yes heal, chicken up, and that's easy going. Fifty percent already down. They have to all rotate back. The anti mage for now stays in here. He comes a bit later to that fight, but there's the engagement on the witch dog as predicted. Well, at the moment protected by, well, first of all the silence, then comes the laguna play, just finishing it off. There is a big fat. Phoenix Egg, and that means also the life of the Leshwag is pretty much forfeited right there. They keep on working on this tower. Two lost for Tong Fu. The other one really went into the ages. The Arctic Burn. Well, Chicken doesn't really care. He gets that tier 3 tower sooner or later down. There are no creeps. Now they're finally a new wave entering. The mother, well, doesn't really help. There is a vortex, but yeah, the embrace is helping you right there. There is a mana void. Beautifully done. I think that Phoenix is going down. Never mind the Icarus type, but there's a projectile. Nope, this one doesn't actually lead to something. Do we have them actually being pursued? They want to turn this all around. Well, Silver Edge, six seconds to go. The Anti-Mage already has to go back because it's just not tanky enough anymore. And the, the Storm trying to get on the Winter Vibrant, but now it should be with the next Overload Charge. Easy going. Also, the Leshrac buying back and then joining this fight. But is it actually a good fight? The Storm dying. The, the Dragonite somehow in the background still getting that kill. On the anti-mage, that was not as planned, but still, they they keep their axes at least. Mm. They keep their axes. The Dragonite managed to use the Silver Blade to assassinate the anti-mage. My slight issue here is what was that? A tier three and three kills versus three kills and a gem lost. 
Storm yeah. lost his gem, and that's a pretty major thing. Actually, the Lashrak, oh, sorry, I, I said something wrong. The Lashrak didn't even buy back. I just thought uh, he was really fast on this one, but uh, he didn't, I don't know. Either I mixed it up, and he wasn't even that, or <laughs> it was the Bloodstone actually bringing him that fast back. I have, I have no idea, but it felt really strange he was that full mana, full HP back into the fight. Uh, my mix up there. 23 and 10, 26 minutes in. Um, I still think EP has, has a decent lead where they can just replicate this and do the same sort of push onto the racks. And then with the racks down, of course, you decrease the farm of the enemy and you have potentially a lane that, that keeps on pushing in while you are doing other stuff. Yeah. Well, part of me wonders now if Tongfu can still get enough wind in their sails to really come back into this game. I look at, say, the Broodmother, I love the pickup of the Orchid on her, considering the Storm jumped in, Orchided the Brood. The Brood Orchided the Storm. Yeah, the storm but was then none of them the actually got each other. That, that's the funny part. I mean, the Storm Spirit died actually because of the silence, thanks to uh, an Orchid over a Dagon. A Dagon would not have made that yeah, difference. Yeah, this, but... this is my point. I like the Orchid for that reason. The Storm jumps yeah. in, he gets Orchided. But you see, they, they actually replicate the same situation. This time, however, without an Aegis, so it's more difficult. There's Sentry Ward down, and they have to either destroy the Sentry Ward, or the Broodmother can just not get close. The problem is, of course, damage over time on a Dragonite. There's a stun. Well, Spitters is coming out. Even the Coconut is flying. He's getting tons of damage right now. Oh, there's even the Ward, and it's bouncing, and it's it keeps on bouncing. That Dragonite, now he finally gets the BKB off. There's the Egg. Nobody's actually going for the Egg, but the Storm keeping them in place at the moment, and the right clicks are completely real. Look at this DK. With low HP, he's still going for it, but the Anti-Mage there, the Mana Void, not doing anything. This was a full HP DK, so I have no idea where this one went. Broodmother also dying. I think this was a Broodmother buyback. Yes. And that means they're definitely gonna get those Rexes. There's no way the anti mage alone with only the Witch Dark is doing something. So Rex confirmed. The question is more or not more? In this case, I think more. That broods down for 54 seconds. They have no mana void. It was actually cast on the DK. The DK was full mana at the time. Slight misplay there. Yep. So I think they can quite easily take more. The Witch Doctor Death Ward on cooldown another 30 seconds. The Winter Wyvern doesn't have a curse for 60. All of these ultimates are spent. I think they could go for more if they really want to force this issue. Yep, I think they did as much as possible, as much as they can do, but that's pretty much it. Right here, right now, the best way is really to go back. The Anti-Mage doesn't agree, he actually gets Orchided up, stunned, and that should be a kill. Is there a Laguna play? No, there is not anymore. He already used that one, even the Witch Dog going down. This is probably the worst Tung Fu could have done. Even the Leshrak, the last one to die, they are all dead. They are all dead, that means Rex and Tong Fu knows this, knowing that they're GG out right away. They wanted to grab someone on the retreat, in the end they are the ones who should have retreated rather. Wow, that was that was really, really bad, that engagement. Yeah, he blinked in, got immediately hexed, immediately orchided and immediately regretted his decision. Absolutely amazing that turnaround. Uh, it's EP well aware of what they can and cannot do, they saw the anti-mage, Instant reaction with the Orchid and the Vortex, all chicken there really fast, like s lightning speed reaction. And that means, guys, it's gonna be amazing best of five and I, I think we're even gonna miss our own tournament, the game <laughs> show, because, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> this is gonna be a very long game. It's a best of five, guys. It's 1-1. One, one. So, Jesus Christ, Blackadder, it's gonna be a long, long day. One hour till the game show actually starts. So let's hurry up, let's hop into the next lobby guys. My name is Heflamo, casting here with Mr. Underscore Blackadder and of course shout out to our statsman, the Corrupt Chop Bear. Yes, you heard right, it's a funny name, haha. <laughs> anyway, we are back. <laughs> 